Hey everyone, today let's discuss die off and what you can do about it. Really in my mind, the most important thing regarding die off is to correctly distinguish between a true die off reaction and an intolerance reaction. And as someone who's had the pleasure of both, I feel I have a pretty good handle on this. And it's also something that as we in the clinic have been better able to equip the people we work with, with sort of the rules to distinguish true die-off from intolerance, it certainly seems to expedite how quickly we get people to the appropriate therapies and don't subject them to fiddling around with pushing through unpleasant side effect symptoms or sort of this polypharmacy where you're adding all sorts of other agents to try to manage what might be an intolerance reaction incorrectly. So getting this right can really reduce undue suffering and side effects. So let's detail what I feel is the best way to navigate die off. Welcome to Dr. Rusha Radio, providing practical science-based insights into health, exploring the importance of nutrition, lifestyle, and gut health through conversations with experts, research reviews, and personal stories. We break through the bias and the noise to bring you simple, trustworthy information that matters. Okay, you've likely heard that in a die-off or a Herxheimer's reaction coined by um, a couple of clinicians many, many years ago treating things like syphilis, actually, that you can experience a accumulation of toxins. So when you're using something like an antimicrobial herb, or a antibiotic, you kill organisms. As you're killing these organisms, toxins are released in the bloodstream. This causes inflammation, this causes symptoms. Typically, these die-off symptoms come from either bacteria, viruses, fungus, or protozoa. And there is some documentation in the scientific literature that die-off does exist. So one thing I think we can say with a small margin of confidence is die-off is not all in your head and it does exist. And by the way, guys, if you are enjoying this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. This way I can hear your thoughts, respond, and also you will be notified when we publish future videos. Typical symptoms of die-off are feeling tired. And this is sort of a, if you had a flu or a bad cold, that sort of fatigue. So cold-like, flu-like symptoms, including fatigue, headache, brain fog, potentially skin reactions, and maybe gastrointestinal side effects. Although I think those are less demonstrative of a die-off reaction. And it's more so that cold flu-like feeling. And if you think about it, when your body is mounting an immune response, that's the sort of reaction we should be seeing in die-off because when you successfully use either an herb or an antibiotic or an antiprotozoal and you start reducing the level of the pathogen, your immune system can sort of kick on. And this is where some of the Herxheimer's or die-off reactions come from. Now, one of the things that can be helpful in answering the question, am I experiencing a die-off? is understanding what the prevalence is. And this is where there's not a lot of research, but I did want to quickly sort of lily pad through what has been published. Die-off from gastrointestinal organisms, like gastrointestinal fungus or SIBO, dysbiosis, in my opinion here, is fairly rare. This is just seeing a lot of these cases and quite rarely seeing die-off. For other types of organisms, like viruses or organisms that may be more systemic in nature, may reside in your bloodstream, inside of your red blood cells. We use the term vector-borne microbes. Some may call this Lyme and Lyme co-infections, though I really don't like the terminology of Lyme because I think it's too ensconced in this sort of extremist, absolutist, and overly fearful narrative. Let me share with you just one or two of the data points delineating some of this. One study in SIBO patients did find a 9% side effect rate. This was from rifaximin, whereas herbals only had a 2% side effect rate. The challenge with this sort of data is how do we delineate between a side effect and a Herxheimer's reaction? And 
we will outline that more in a moment, but just wanted to share that one study looking at a rough prevalence of maybe between two and 9% in SIBO. And then when you look at the body of data on Lyme and co-infections or, or vector-borne microbes, the range is somewhere between 7 and 39%, hence why my feeling, partially driven by the evidence, is in these sort of blood-borne microbes, there's a significantly higher incidence of die-off reactions. But now we come to the more important question, which is how do we successfully and correctly distinguish between a true die-off and an intolerance reaction? Well, really, I think to make that distinction is quite simple. Now, this is based upon my clinical experience, but I'll share with you a study that partially reinforces this. If it's a die-off, it's temporary. If it's a intolerance reaction, it's longer term or permanent. Now, when we say temporary, how do we define that? Usually in a die-off reaction or a Herxheimer's reaction, you'll start noticing the negative side effects within maybe a day or two. And then they should go away by about day four or five. So you'll have a few days, one, two, three, four-ish days where you'll feel tired and flu-like, but then things will start to get better. And this is the crucial, crucial aspect to bear in mind. Another way of thinking about that is it tells you you are on the right therapeutic track. And just as a quick aside, the first time I ever experienced a die-off reaction was using the antibiotic antiprotozoal agent known as Alinea. And I can still remember when I was going to and from my clinical internships, I would have to drive across the San Mateo Bridge. And if you're doing this in the afternoon, the sun is setting. It's actually quite beautiful. But I remember feeling toxic. My eyes felt swollen. I felt foggy. And even that little bit of light was enough to make me feel uh, as though it was blinding. However, this only lasted for a number of days and then it subsided. So that's a key point. There was a 2020 case study that essentially found the same thing, wherein there was only a few days of this negative type of reaction. And then after that, there were improvements, right? So this is crucially important to understand and to separate that from, if you do notice these negative symptoms, the headachiness, the low mood, the brain fogginess, the fatigue lasts more than five to seven days. This is a very likely situation of intolerance, meaning it's not the right therapeutic fit for you. And I'll tie this into the troubleshooting protocol in a moment, but this is important. And I also just want to plant this seed here that I don't think it means decrease the dose. If your body is not liking something in a reasonable dose, I don't think the solution is giving the body less of what it doesn't like, right? And that's a good transition into the protocol. Firstly, never stop, especially antibiotics, without talking with your doctor first. Because if there is an inappropriate discontinuation of antibiotics, and this is done too frequently throughout the population, we can uh, you know, foster antibiotic associated resistance. So make sure to check with your healthcare provider on this first. But as step one, wait and see. If you get to roughly the five day mark and you notice the negative symptoms are starting to improve, then that tells you, good, this is a sign that the therapy is working. And now you're starting to feel better once you get through that first five-ish days. Now, if you're getting to day five, six, seven, and the symptoms are not getting any better or even getting worse, this tells you your immune system doesn't like the agent. There are allergies or intolerances to antibiotics, to herbs. So if that's the case, then step two would be trying a different agent. And this is where you can change from something like, let's say it's oregano as an herbal to artemisinin or from one antibiotic to another. With probiotics, just to touch on this, in my experience, people do not have die-off reactions from probiotics. The same rules would apply because there's always an exception to any general rule, but it's quite rare. And this is why 
We use probiotics according to the three different categorical types so that if someone is experiencing a negative reaction that persists more than that five-ish day mark, you can try a different probiotic formula so as to circumvent. And it could be a different antimicrobial if that's what you're using. Now, a few other things I wanted to speak to, coming back to the common recommendation to reduce dose. I'm not a fan of this for twofold reasons. One, like I mentioned a moment ago, if this agent is eliciting a immune reaction, a negative immune reaction, an intolerance reaction, we don't want that in your system at a lower dose. What we want is a agent that you'll tolerate in the full clinical dose, and we don't have a suspicion that it's negatively impacting your immune system and creating a negative response. So this is where switching to a different agent, in my mind, is more important than using a lower dose. We want something that we can use at a target dose to have the impact that we want to have. Using something like an eighth or a fourth of the recommended clinical dose may not be enough to move the needle. And why this matters is we want to move people through their therapies at a good cadence. We don't want to be waiting forever. So if it is a die-off, you should be through it inside of a week. If it's an intolerance, we should switch to another agent, get you on a clinically viable dose so you can move forward and improve how you're feeling. Another item that comes up here is binders. So this could be charcoal, bentonite clay, chlorella, and these have been shown to bind to toxins. They have not been studied for their ability to reduce die-off. Now, not being studied and being disproven are two different things. But my perspective on this is you don't need these binders because you'll get through the die-off in a reasonable amount of time. And I, I just don't see a strong case for the binders, especially when it's often recommended to be on the binders for a long period of time. Remember, if it is a die-off, that's a good sign. And we want to be able to read what's happening in your body. And also, we don't want to murky what's going on with your, with your care by adding all sorts of things. And this can be a really slippery slope. So again, if it is a die-off, it'll be gone soon. It's a good indicator that it's a successful therapy. And if it's not, we want to switch. What I'm hoping will not happen to you is you're having a negative reaction. It's incorrectly called a Herxmer's or a die-off. And then you start taking binders and clay, and those things may also cause a negative reaction. And before you know it, you're a month in, and the story you're being told is, well, this is just your body detoxing. This is just your body you know, pushing out all the microbes, stick with it. Not the case. Not, and again, I've gone through this, and you should be in and out of a die-off inside of a week. And if it's not, change the therapy. Don't try to treat the negative reaction. Things like ginger or other antihistamines or mast cell stabilizers may have a time and a place. Ginger, and acetylcysteine quercetin, these are known to reduce inflammation, to reduce reactivity against LPS, to help with things like nausea, to lower levels of histamine. Could you use these? Sure. But again, do I think these will be the difference between success or failure? No. Now, again, you could use these, but I would just be a little bit cautious to not add into a situation where you're trying to delineate, is this therapy or maybe couple antimicrobial therapies, are they tolerated? The more stuff you add into your care plan, the harder it gets to read what's causing a reaction or assess that inside of a week resolution of symptoms indicating it's a die-off, right? Simple scenario would be you're having what you think might be a die-off and three, four, five days in, you add in something like ginger, which is generally well tolerated, but for some people causes an intolerance reaction. And so now you can't tell if the antimicrobial agent is experiencing an improvement, meaning it was a temporary die-off, you're getting to day seven and your symptoms are going away because you've added in another agent and inadvertently that agent caused a reaction and now you're really confused in terms of what's going on, right? So simplicity in the selection of therapeutics is crucially important because it reduces confounding variables. And that I think is really the most important point to close with. When you are using antimicrobial therapy, 
you can experience die off. It's somewhat rare depending on the microbe. If it's GI in nature, fairly rare. And if it's some sort of vector borne microbe, maybe as high as 39%. So that is significant. In my experience, they are somewhat rare. They do happen. The way to determine if it is a Herxheimer's, a die off, or if it is an intolerance, again, is the timing. And it's hard to assess timing if you're adding other things to try to manage those negative symptoms. So write it out. Again, if it is a die off, you will see that abate by around five days. And if it's not, change agents. Be careful not to drift into polypharmacy, even if it's natural because that can murky the read. Okay, guys, well, I hope this helps. And remember, if you do have die-off, that is a positive sign because it tells you you're relieving a burden. So bear that in mind, as I did, the few days where you're feeling really tired and you might be taking one, two, or even three naps in a day because you're just feeling run down and cruddy, that's your body actually going through a process of mounting an immune response, mounting inflammation, having some die-off due to some of the associated toxins and inflammation. But again, if it stops within a week or five days, that's a great sign. So stick with it, keep things simple, one step at a time, and let me know in the comments what your experience here has been. All right, hope this helps. Talk to you soon. Thank you.